767 versus 787. Is the 787 a true successor to its popular predecessor? The 787 was launched back in 2004 as Boeing's next big thing, to transform the way we fly in a point-to-point -point future. The goal? A step change in fuel efficiency with new technologies in a medium-sized airframe to lower operational costs. At the time, 767 and 8330 were the most popular medium-sized widebodies. 787 was intended to replace 767 and compete with 8330, but was it a perfect replacement? And how much more capable is the 787 compared to its previous generation workhorse? Well, that's what we find out in this one. But before we do, if you're new here, a warm welcome and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. By the way, before we carry on, there's an invitation to collaborate on the Airplane Productions podcast. If you would be interested to send in any voiceover of any topic related to aerospace to be featured in future podcasts, do let me know. More details are in the community post linked in the description below, so do check it out. Your YouTube channel will be featured and will also receive a shout out. I thought it would be pretty fun. I think it'll be a pretty fun project, but do let me know what you think. Okay, back to this one. Starting with performance, the 787 was designed to match 767 on capacity but outfly in range. 787-8 carries 248 passengers in two class while flying 7,305 nautical miles. The Dash 9 carries 296 two class and 7,530 nautical miles. While the largest Dash 10 designed for regional routes carries 330 passengers to 6,345 nautical miles. Miles. 787 models are overall one size up and carry around 30 more seats than the equivalent 767s. The Dash 8 is closer in size and range to the Dash 300ER, which flies 5,980 nautical miles while carrying 261 passengers to class. The largest Dash 400ER carries 296 with a regional range of 5,625 nautical miles. All in all, the 787 may be a 767 replacement, but its performance is encroaching into the larger of white bodies. Engines, the 787 features either Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 TEN or GE NX1B, the most powerful producing 76,000 pounds of thrust. With a new 112-inch fan and 10 to 1 bypass, it's quieter, cleaner and as you would see later, more efficient. The 767 engine selection is confusing, with the PWJT90 offered on early versions, though the latter 300 and 400ER used PW4000 or GECF6, with up to 61,500 pounds of thrust. Fuel burn, and here's where the 787 excels. Boeing promised when launched a 20% cut in fuel burn thanks to new engines, new wings, and a lighter composite airframe. The efficiency was key so airlines could start new routes with low demand but longer distances never economically viable.
We'll compare the Dash 8 to the Dash 300ER. Over a typical route length of 3,400 nautical miles, the Dash 8 burns 5.11 kg of fuel per kilometer of fuel burn per trip and 2.68 liters per 100 km per passenger in terms of fuel burn per seat when configured with 232 seats in two class. The Dash 300ER burns 5.39 kg per kilometer in fuel burn per trip and 3.09 liters per 100 km meters in terms of fuel burn per seat with a 218 seat admittedly less dense to class but these are the only figures available. All in all, the fuel burn per trip is only about 5% less though fuel burn per seat is down around 14% for all versions. Cabins. The 767 features a signature interior mainly from 777s, with airlines retrofitting older aircraft with new live flat business seats, Wi-Fi and new mood lighting. However, it's one of the narrowest white bodies around, which while making it efficient means less space for passengers. Initially, the aircraft came in a 232 configuration with wide 18-inch seats. The latter versions were fitted with 17-inch seats. Overhead bins weren't particularly large and really, the 787's new sky interior is a much welcomed upgrade. With larger windows that dim at the touch of a button, larger overhead bins, lower cabin altitude, with higher cabin pressure in a quieter cabin, latest one. Wi-Fi and IFE, higher ceilings and mood lighting standard, it's easily the more comfortable aircraft. However, while the cabin is wider, once again, it was launched to take only 8 abreast, but due to the higher weight than expected, Boeing added 9 abreast with only 17 inch seats. Not particularly comfortable. All in all, though, it still has the better cabin. Advantages and disadvantages. With proven technologies and high reliability, the 767 is one of the cheapest white bodies to operate for any airline. It also has the lowest list prices at 217.9 million for the Dash 300ER, and it's a great first early white body for airlines. However, it's also the narrowest of white bodies, which hampers its underfloor cargo capability. It is, however, more versatile, coming in as a freighter and military versions. The 787 may be more expensive as a passenger aircraft, but it's certainly one of the best going into the 2030s. With its higher efficiency and longer range, it allows airlines to grow on 767 point-to-point -point routes and launch new longer ones. It changed the face of the aviation industry moving towards smaller twins. However, it's more expensive and there is a long queue to delivery date. Orders. The 767 is one of the most popular white bodies, with all versions selling 1,279 orders, including military and freighters. 787, however, has not just captured 767 replacement market, but generated demand for a whole new generation of smaller twins, receiving a mind blowing 1,507 orders. So then, is the 787 a true successor to its popular predecessor? Well, it's certainly a very capable white body and a great addition to airline's fleet. Its performance is so good however that in my view, it's really targeting a market segment higher than 767 and below 777, creating a new market of new generation long haul medium sized twins. It's a truly revolutionary aircraft that goes along well with 767, together both serve airlines short, medium and long range needs incredibly well.